Think of the ways sound is important to us. Sound lets us talk. Yeah. Sound helps us learn about things. Tomorrow, more sunshine and slightly warmer temperatures. With the wind from. It's nice to listen to sounds. Sound does many things. It entertains us. It helps us communicate. It warns us of danger. Sound can make us want to dance or hold our ears. There are many different kinds of sound. But all sounds are alike in some ways. Look at this comb. It doesn't make a sound. But if you run your fingers across the top, it makes a sound. This symbol isn't making a sound. But if you hit it, it makes a ringing sound. This ruler doesn't make a sound when it is still. If you bend it and let it go, then it makes a sound. Why do you think the comb, the symbol, and the ruler make a sound? Your teacher can stop the video here to let you answer this question. Otherwise, the program will resume in 10 seconds. Sound is made when something vibrates. When something vibrates, it moves back and forth. The comb makes a sound when the teeth of the comb vibrate. The ruler makes a sound when it moves back and forth. And the cymbal makes a ringing sound when it vibrates. When something vibrates and makes a sound, it makes the air around it vibrate. These vibrations are called sound waves. They move out in all directions from whatever makes the sound. You can't see sound waves, but here's a way to show that sound waves or vibrations move through the air. Sprinkle some rice on top of a drum. Look what happens when you make a loud noise near the drum. The rice moves. The rice moves because when you made the loud noise, Sound vibrations moved through the air and made the drum vibrate, too. Inside our ears, our eardrums are like the drum. When sound waves reach our ears, they make our eardrums vibrate. Our eardrums then send messages to our brains, and this is how we hear. It takes time for sound vibrations to move through the air. Have you ever watched a thunderstorm? First, you see the lightning. Then, a few seconds later, you hear the thunder. Sound travels through the air more slowly than light, so sound takes longer to reach us. Sound travels through other things besides air. In fact, sound travels better and faster through water. Here's something you can do to compare how sound travels through water and air. Hold a watch near your ear and listen to it ticking. Then hold a plastic bag filled with water next to your ear and put the watch up against it. Does the ticking sound louder? Sound vibrations travel even better through many things that are solid, like wood or metal. Tap the top of a table like this and listen to the sound it makes. Now tap it again, but this time put your ear right on the table. It sounds louder because the sound vibrations travel better through wood than through air. In outer space, however, you can't hear anything because there is no air or water or wood or anything else to carry sound vibrations. When astronauts work in space, their tools don't make any noise at all.
There is something else about sound waves. This ball provides a hint. The ball bounces. Sound waves can bounce just like the ball. Here's something you can try. Speak loudly into a metal waste basket. Hello. The echo you hear is sound waves bouncing off the sides of the waste basket. Hello. Now, put a towel in the waste basket and speak again. Hello. You don't hear an echo、Hello. because the towel absorbs or soaks up the sound、Hello. waves rather than bouncing them back. Think of other ways sound can be different. Listen to these sounds. Some sounds are soft. Now listen to these sounds. Some sounds are loud. Hit a drum softly. It makes a soft sound. Now hit it harder. It makes a louder sound. How loud or soft a sound is is called volume. There are other ways sounds can be different. Some sounds are high. Some sounds are low. The highness or lowness of a sound is called pitch. Pitch is different from volume. Hold a ruler on the edge of a table so that most of the ruler is off the table. If you twang it gently, it will make a soft, low sound. If you twang it harder, the ruler will move up and down more and make a louder sound, but it is still at a low pitch. Now move the ruler so that the part that vibrates is shorter. When you twang it, it vibrates faster than before, and the pitch is higher. But how loud it is depends on how hard you twang it. Just as you can change the pitch of the sounds made by a ruler, you can change the pitch of sounds made by a musical instrument. Let's take a few minutes to see how musical instruments work. And how you can make your own instruments. Look at these rubber bands. Do they remind you of anything? How about the strings on a guitar? This is John Bertels. He is a musician. John also helps students make their own instruments with things they might otherwise throw away. You know, you can build some really great musical instruments from stuff that's just lying around the house. In this case, what I did was I just took some rubber bands and stretched them around an old shoebox. Now, you may not think that's much of a guitar, but when you think about it, all these strings are vibrating. And the way to get different pitches with this instrument is to pull the rubber bands tighter or looser. In this case, this is the tightest one that I have. It's got a nice high sound to it. If I make the rubber band a little bit looser by pulling the rubber band up a little from the side of the box. Pitch gets lower each time I pull it. And what I've done with each of these rubber bands is I've pulled them to a tighter and looser kind of position, and that way they each make different pitches. Here's another musical instrument that you can make from something around the house. This one is called the tube trombone, and it's just two tubes of cardboard which slide back and forth like this. Now, one cool thing about these instruments is that the longer the instrument gets, the lower the pitch gets. So that's why this one slides back and forth like this. Now, what's vibrating on this particular musical instrument is my lips, because all I have to do is just buzz my lips. So try this: put your hand into a little circle like this, put your lips inside, and go. Try not to do it on your little sister, though; she may not like it so much. So what I'm going to do is just sort of buzz my lips inside the tube. Another simple and fun instrument is the panpipes. Now, in this case, what I've done is I've taken the, taken just、uh, plastic soda bottles and things like that, and taped them together. 
Now, it's important that you use things that did not contain chemicals or medicine or anything like that, and that's why I like to use plastic soda or juice or water. Please, no glass. All you have to do is just put your lower lip to the bottle, like this, and you blow over the top kind of gently. What's vibrating is the air that's inside. And so the more air there is, for example, on this bottle, this has the most air, that has the lowest pitch. One of my favorite simple instruments is the can drums. And what I'm using here is just different size cans. Each one has a different sound because, of course, they're different sizes. And then finally, I'm using pencils as sticks. Now you notice I'm using the blunt end, you can also use the eraser end, but I wouldn't really want to use the point end. And another safety note that you should know about, one of the things about the cans you have to be careful with, of course, is that when you take the top of the can off, sometimes you're left with a sharp piece of metal. So be really careful when you use that. So now you can take the pencils and just hit the cans. Now the difference between noise and music is organization, because music is just organized sound. So when I'm playing these cans, I'm playing with rhythms and patterns, and that's music. But if I was to take these cans and just sweep them on the floor, well that would be disorganized sound, so that would just be noise. Music is an important part of many people's lives. There are many kinds of music, but there are other ways sounds are made. Say ah and feel your throat. Do you feel something vibrating? Inside your throat, there are vocal cords that vibrate. These make it possible for us to talk. Vocal cords are like the neck of this balloon. As you let air out of the balloon, it causes the neck to vibrate and make a noise. In fact, you can control the way the balloon sounds by stretching the neck, just as you can control the way your voice sounds. Every day, we depend a lot on our eyes and ears to make sense of the world around us. But what if you couldn't see with your eyes? Could you tell what different sounds are just by listening with your ears? Let's try. We'll play different sounds, but we won't show you right away what makes each sound. See if you can guess. In this program, we saw many things about sound. A sound is caused when something vibrates. Vibrations travel through the air to reach our ears. Sound travels through the air more slowly than light. Sound travels better through water and many solids than through air. Sounds can be loud, and sounds can be soft. Volume is how loud or soft a sound is. Sounds can be high, and sounds can be low. Pitch is how high or low a sound is. We saw how musicians make sounds that please us and how we can make our own instruments out of different things you find around the house. Finally, we saw how sound helps us to talk, 
to listen and to learn. Yeah, it's like a